Hi guys, this is Stuart Rawlins, Life Coach here. I wanted to do a quick video, or, or intending on doing a quick video, on a topic that is intensely, intensely dear to my heart, and that is insecurity and clinginess or neediness in relationships. Now, the background for me is, and the reason why I'm so, so passionate about this topic, is that I have suffered from insecurity or neediness in relationships or in regards to women uh, for, for 17 years. And one of the things, one of the things is that I have suffered with this because fundamentally I did not see that I was good enough and I was not enough on my own and and I was putting that on a woman and women because it's been present in my life for, for such a long time up until uh, probably two three weeks ago and And now I feel really, I feel really weird now because I'm operating from a place of where I don't need a woman. I don't need um, anyone in my life to make me happy. And in the past, when I was doing that, when I was operating from that kind of belief or that misunderstanding that that a woman or or, or anyone, I mean, this this is a, this relates to women as well. You know, that man will not make you happy if you are fundamentally not happy on your own or in your own body or as you are it, it just won't work it's a misunderstanding it's a misconception you know it's based on the belief the mistaken belief especially this is this is for me fundamentally where i was operating from it was based on that mistake that mistaken belief that a woman will make me feel better you know, I always used to go, ah, oh, when I get a woman in my life, uh, I'll be happy. I'll be joyful. You know, I could do all the things I can't do now. Well, you know, that's, that's maybe you could play tennis because uh, it's quite difficult to play it on your own. Um, I used to do that when I was a kid. That's a bit sad, but, but you know, that's true. I used to play against the wall. Um, but, you know, you, she won't make you feel happy. She won't make you feel happy or, or enough at your core and you know it's exactly the same for anything else in life if you think your happiness your love comes from outside of you from a car shopping booze alcohol whatever you want to call it drugs anything else if you think your happiness and love comes from having that thing in your life then it is a misunderstanding and fundamentally you can see that and you can feel that for example and this is a personal example. I used to I used to buy a lot of clothes, and I used to buy uh, jeans and jumpers. I used to love jumpers, still do. Um, I used to buy them, and I go, ah, oh, I'm gonna feel better. I'm gonna look better. I'm gonna I'm gonna be absolutely amazing. And and when I was buying it, I would feel rushed. I'd feel tense. And that to me now is an indicator that you're not coming from the right place. You're not coming from a place of presence. You're not coming from a place of sensible decision making. You're believing that that thing, I was believing that the jumper or the piece of clothing was making me feel better. It was making me feel better about myself. It wasn't. I'd buy it and, and I'd get home and I'd be like, why, why did I buy this? Or even maybe a week or two weeks later, I'd be like, oh, I regret buying that. You know, it was 100 quid or, or, or 50 quid or whatever um, that, I couldn't, that I couldn't really afford or even if I could afford it at the time, it still did not fill that hole that I felt I had. I didn't have it. That's that's another misunderstanding. I didn't have a hole. It was a misunderstanding that I am not enough and I am not love at my core, my centre, before my ego and before my thoughts about myself. I didn't see that to be true. I fundamentally did not see that to be true and I was putting that on other people. So what changed for me? Well, what changed for me is that I met a girl that I really liked. Um, and again, it happened. I, I got clingy. I got needy. I reacted out of that and, and, and I pushed her away. I was most likely really annoying. Um, 
messaging her, verifying or validating myself. And, and I wasn't being my true self. You know, I wasn't being my true self who I was on the first date. You know, the first date went really amazingly after the first 15 minutes where I got out of my head. And I just didn't have any thinking going on. I connected, I was myself, I listened, I was deeply intuitive. And, and I was just my fun, natural self that I am normally. But after, after the second date, I got needy. I got clingy. You know, I, I made a mistake and I reacted badly. Um, not how I would now and not how I would like to react. But then that made me question myself. It made me question my value. It made me question my, uh, my um, well, basically, it, it, it took me by the wayside and, and it looked like my happiness had come from her and she was testing that and now it feels like oh my god she doesn't like me anymore ah oh, i've lost the love i've lost the connection that i so dearly want but again you know that was just me thinking or misunderstanding that i was losing losing love that wasn't coming from her it was coming from me because there's no way that uh, anyone else can make you feel a particular way. It just simply, it wouldn't happen. You know, there'd be guys walking down the street and, and, and a girl would be walking the other way. And if it worked that way, if someone could make you feel something, if someone could make you feel loved, then those guys would make that girl, make them, make them love her. Or rather, they would make her love them. You know, if that was how it worked, that would be that would be happening every day. People would be making other people fall in love with them. Other people making them feel a certain way about them. It's just not how it works. And this is what I realised over the last probably two, three weeks. After I had took a bit of space and a bit of time for myself. And also I had some coaching by uh, my coach, Ankus Jane. And, and also I talked to a, a few other coaches, Alfredo uh, Cossi. And, and Rahini Ross and, and Ivo Konstantinov, and I said his name probably wrong, but but I talked to those guys, and 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 I, and I was also doing a, a lot of I like reading, and there's a guy called Sidney Banks, and if you haven't heard of him, then I really recommend you listen to some of his audios or or, or get some of his book, uh, The Enlightened Garden is is one that I'd recommend quite heartily, and I was reading that actually I was reading that book, and and I was talking to these people, and. I realised once I'd slowed down and I'd given that time and space for myself, I realised that the love did not come from outside of me. It came from within inside of me. And once I was relaxing in the sun, I had no thinking going on or, or, or very little thinking going on. I was present in the moment with the sun because I love sun. I thought I just had I just had that realisation and I've written a post on it and, and it's on my Facebook page. And, and 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 other Facebook groups, and I realised that fundamentally, before any of the thought, before ego, which is just what I think of myself or the outside world, I realised before the beliefs of insecurity, before before any of those beliefs of insecurity, just based up on thoughts that I believe to be true, which are not true, they're just energy, just thought. I realised that I was love at my core, and I had that when I was present with someone. When I'm truly present with someone, whether it be my, I don't know, I haven't got kids, but if I had a kid, or my parents, or my partner, or, or anyone in life, especially the ones you really care for, when you're present with them, you're feeling love for them. Because you've got no, generally, you've got no thinking going on when you're present in the moment. So that's what I realised. And in that moment, and subsequently to that, I realised that I didn't need to be needy and clingy because it just didn't make sense. I couldn't get that feeling of love or, or whatever from anyone else. You know, I had love. I felt love for a particular girl. She wasn't there with me. She wasn't talking to me. So, you know, how how would that work otherwise? It, it just wouldn't. It's not It's not logical. So where there's only one place that love can come from, and that's, in, that's inside of me. And the other thing I realised... Coming on to it, it, when I was talking to Rahini Ross in a call, is that for the 17 years of my life, so I'm 33 now, 
So the 17 years, I get needy, I get clingy, and then I would analyze it. I'm like, why do I feel? Why do I feel this? Why do I feel that? Why? How can I get rid of it? How can I do this? How can I do that? And I realized I didn't need to. I didn't need to analyze it, and I didn't need to go into it. The more I analyzed it, and the more I looked into it, then the bigger a problem it came. And the bigger a problem it came, obviously, then the bigger it came, the bigger it came, and the more I associated with it. And the longer that kept, that longer that went ahead, you know, after a year, two, three, four, five years, it became something permanent in my belief system that I believed was 100% true about me. I thought that I was a needy person in relationships. That was just a fact, you know. That was a fact, and, and, and I, I couldn't get rid of it. And I tried, and I tried punching it, and I not physically, obviously, but I tried getting rid of it. And the more I tried getting rid of it, then the more it stayed present. The more it became a problem. And as soon as I stopped doing that, as soon as I stopped analysing, as soon as I stopped jumping into that, the, the less time it lasted, the quicker my thoughts could just move on. You have 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day, apparently. And once those had moved on, my feelings of neediness and security had moved on. For me, when I hardly ever get angry, but when I get angry, I don't do anything about it. I don't think I'm an angry person. I just go, oh, I'm just angry about something. I don't even know what it is. You know, I, I literally just forget what it is and then I get angry about something else. But what I do is I just sit and do nothing. I don't manage it. I just go, I'm, I'm angry today or I'm angry for this now. And and and, and it, it clears. You know, inherently it might last the day, but then when I go to sleep, I get up, it, it clears. And you might have that for other things as well, you know. You might even have it for cleanliness and neatness if you're watching this. You might go, oh, when I feel needy, I, you know, I don't do anything about it. I just might, I might mitigate the damage. You know, when I'm angry, I don't, I don't, or I try and mitigate my the damage by not going or talking to people, not talking to my family as much, because inherently I'll be reacting out of that anger and, and, and my um, interactions and my conversations won't be as I want them. So when it comes back to neediness and cleanliness, I might mitigate the damage. So, you know, if I'm talking to a girl and I suddenly feel a bit needy, a bit, a bit clingy, which, you know, it will still happen because it's human nature. Everyone will feel needy or clingy at a particular point in time in a relationship. And if they don't, then they're probably lying. And it's probably, it's, it's true, they, everyone feels it. And you just don't need to do anything about it. You can just mitigate the damage. You can just say, look, uh, I don't know, Darlene, I'm, uh, or whatever your girlfriend or partner's name is, I I'm feeling a bit, and maybe with a bit less kind of like attitude, but you just say, I feel a bit needy today, and uh, or, or very now, uh, um, I'd like a bit of my own space, please. And, and I would guarantee you most of the time they will probably give you that space. And then if you just take that space for yourself, mitigate the damage, and then just don't analyse it. You know, don't analyse it, don't fix it, don't try to avoid it. Just, it is what it is. And, and if you start to do that, then that's fine too. Don't judge yourself. You know, everyone does it. I fall into analysing my thoughts, analysing my feelings. It's just it's human nature. But it's also human nature just to, just to allow these things to move on. You know, just to kind of sleep on it, as they say. And, and just allow your feelings and allow your thoughts just to move themselves on. Because inherently everyone is 100% healthy, mentally healthy at their core or mentally perfect at their core. And what we don't see, we don't see that. We forget about that. As a kid or as a baby, you know, we don't have a problem generally with our mental health. Because we don't forget that we are and we have that inner healthy being when you cut yourself what do you do you might clean it you might go and get it sewn up but inherently you just allow it you just allow the body to do its own thing and you know the body has its own thing its own healing mechanism for mental health as well the thing is that we forget about it but coming back to uh, uh, the analogy that i was going to make is that you know it's like the sun it's always there, but it gets covered by the clouds of our thinking. 
But all we need to do is we need to wait for the wind just to blow the clouds on by. So you know, coming back to you, I'm, ho I'm hoping this video is of some use. Um, cleanliness and, as I said, cleanliness and neediness has been a massive thing in my life. And, and, and now I'm living from a place where I, I don't have that so much. Um, and, and I would say pretty much 90, 95% of that's dropped. I wouldn't say 100% because I think it's natural to still have that, especially in new relationships, you know, where you're not quite sure. But yeah, I, and I really hope that you've taken or, or you can take something away from from my experience and my openness with you about that experience. And if you want any help or, or if you want any guidance or, or whatever, then just feel free to to add me on Facebook, Stuart Rawlins, R A W L I N S, um, or just DM me. You know, you don't have to add me as a friend. That's fine. Um, and I'm also on Twitter, you know, uh, Lao Stu, it's L-A-O-S-T-U. So if you want to follow me, message me there, then, then you know, that's absolutely fine. And, and But fundamentally, you don't have to do any of that. I just hope that some of this video was useful to you. And I would just like to wish you adieu, uh, sounding posh, or at least it sounded funny in my head. And uh, I hope you have a brilliant morning, afternoon, evening, whenever or or... Well, yeah, whenever you're watching this.